So, welcome back, part two. Find the reference angle for these three angles. Now, I like to draw them, so 135 would be about here. So, what would the reference angle be for that angle? Well, the reference angle is made with the terminal side and the closest x-axis. Remember that. Say it with me. X-axis. Say it again. X-axis. For some reason, people want to use Y, but it's always X. So this would be 45 would be the reference angle. This one would be, well, let's see, 360, and then up here, 60 more. So how far is it between here and here? Well, 60 degrees. And this one, negative 60, we... Oop. So negative 60, how far is it between here and here? And remember, the reference angle is defined, between, is defined as between 0 and 90. So it has to be positive, so the reference angle would be 60 degrees. Now what they discovered throughout history is that you can switch a trig function. Of an angle to equal the sine of the trig function times the reference angle. Now remember, if you're in the Cartesian coordinate system, each quadrant has signs to it. Here they're both positive. You're going positive, positive. Here it's negative, positive. This is negative, negative. And this is um, a, a, a positive, negative. So which trig functions would be positive and which would be negative in the different quadrants? Well, here, since they're both positive, all of them are positive. Here you have y positive. Now, r is always positive. So which trig function is y and r? Well, that would be sine and cosecant. Here, negative and negative. So uh, 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 sine is negative because y is negative, r is positive. Cosine is negative because x is negative, but r is positive. But tangent is positive because y divided by x would be two negatives and cotangent. And here, uh, uh, x is positive and r is positive, that would be cosine, because cosine is x over r. And secant. So, if I have, let's say, a cosine of 120 degrees, there's two things I have to do to do this problem. First, I have to determine the SIGN, the sine. Well, 120 degrees is in the second quadrant. Is cosine positive or negative in the second quadrant? Well, cosine's x over r, so it would be negative. Then, if I find the right sign because of the pattern, I can switch this with the reference angle. And 120 degrees would be about here, so this would be 60 degrees. So cosine 120 is exactly the same as negative cosine 60. You can do this on Desmos if you don't believe me. And then the cosine of 60, we all know, is a half. You should have that memorized. You should have it memorized. Do you have that chart written down? I would have that chart written down. I'm talking about this chart. Because that's what we're going to be doing today, tomorrow, and then Tuesday even, and Wednesday. So over the weekend, you might want to get this down after you're done practicing. And notice, I'm hoping you're taking notes when you're doing this. 
So let's do sine of 150. So two things you got to do. You got to find out, is it positive or negative? And switch it with the reference angle. And then the reference angle should get you to a number you know. Now we're only using nice numbers. Because it's easy to work with nice numbers. So, sine of 150. Let's see, that's about right there. So the reference angle is 30. Because there's 30 degrees between the x-axis and the terminal side. And in the second quadrant, uh, let's see, uh, uh, y is positive. Sine is y over r. r is always positive. So sine, and I'm going to do this, but you shouldn't. It's a positive sine of 150. Then what is the sine of 30? Oh my goodness, it's a half. Now, there used to be a teacher that taught there that said I shouldn't do this, but he retired so I can do it now. There's a little phrase. All students take classes. Or you could say calculus. Those are the ones that are positive. All of them are positive in the first. Sine is positive in the second. Tangent's positive in the third. And cosine is positive in the fourth. So let's try another one. Let's do tangent of 315. Okay, so 315. Whoa, that is in the fourth quadrant. Tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant because tangent's y over x and you got a negative y and a positive x. So that's negative. Then the reference angle, let's see, how many degrees is between the terminal side and the closest x-axis? Well, that's 45 because 360 were just short of the 315. So, okay, tangent of 45 is one. Try just one on your own. Just one, I'm just saying, okay, two. If you're really begging me, I'm gonna let you try two. So let's say we have the sine of, oh, 210. And let's say we have cosine of a negative, oops, parentheses, negative 135. Why is that so dark? So figure those two out if you can. Now, if you can't, just wait and I'm going to do them. Okay, here we go. So sine 210. 210 is in the third quadrant. Sine is negative in the third quadrant because y is negative. You're going down. R is always positive. So it would be negative sine. And 210, what's the reference angle? 30 degrees. And the sine of 30 is a half. We have it memorized. Yes, we do. I hope. Now, negative 135 we're going this way. We're in the third quadrant. All students take tangent, cotangent, positive. So the other four are negative. So the, it's negative cosine. And the reference angle, how far is it between the x-axis? Not positive x-axis, just x-axis. And the terminal side, that's 45. And we already have memorized the cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. So the answer is a negative square root of 2 over 2. Whew. So you got to find out is it positive or negative. So what you're going to do this weekend is study this and get this down. Then Monday is pretty much just going to be review. I'll review it and then I'm going to have a worksheet for you to do. Do Monday night. Oh, doing the same night. Oh, my goodness. I'm so scared. So have a good day.